Who's not wearing their seatbelt? Me. Virginia. <sighs> This is crazy looking. This is Where crazy are we going? going? This like, is, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what it looks like in this part of Texas, but it almost feels like we're in South Africa. It really does. So how are you feeling going to see this house? I'm excited. I mean, I know you're nervous. I'm always nervous, but you're I'm like always extra nervous. nervous. We always say we make lemonade, right? We well, that's what design is about. I mean, there are always going to be challenges. The majority of our job is problem solving in a really beautiful way. <laughs> <laughs> Building a home is never easy, but what happens when you add in a global pandemic? With new obstacles and endless supply chain disruptions, can your dream home still become a reality? To prove what really is possible, we went to Fredericksburg, Texas and teamed up with Tyler O'Brien of Agave Custom Homes and built a craftsman style farmhouse in Hill Country. Then we called on eight design teams from around the country to turn these empty rooms into a haven that's peaceful, productive, and party ready. Stay tuned to learn all their tricks of the trade, from when to splurge, to how to get creative in the face of inevitable constraints. No matter your own style, you're bound to find a new idea for every room in your house. I'm your host, Carisha Swanson with House Beautiful, and this is season one of Blank Slate. Today, we're focused on the owner suite. I chose Jessica and Virginia of design firm Toledo Geller for these spaces. Their focus on design and construction makes them the perfect design duo to manage this process. I'm Virginia Toledo, one half of Toledo Geller Interiors. And I'm Jessica Geller, the other half. <laughs> <laughs> we like to call ourselves sort of like soft modern. We like to play with color, textures, patterns. And I think something that's always an underlying adjective for our work is that it's fresh. Oh my God, is that the house? It's the house. Oh, this is awesome. It looks so good. So good. Oh my gosh. Hey ladies. Hey, <laughs> Welcome to Fredericksburg. We're so happy to be here. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too. And you match, right? <laughs> We do. Happens <laughs> way too often. Not hey, when. Your design friends, your style friends. That's right. Let me go show you the space. It's pretty awesome. It. We're excited. <laughs> we were challenged with the owner's suite. So that included the vestibule, the bedroom itself, owner's bathroom, and the closet as well. Tall order. It was. We were excited though. I was totally excited. Yeah. When I called Toledo Geller, I really wanted them to do the owner suite because they are a duo, they're a team. And I felt like giving somebody a bedroom, a closet, and the bathroom would be a little intense for any single designer to do. So I wanted them to take it because I felt like they had the bones and the structure to be able to do it. All right, ladies, welcome to your space. <laughs> got three rooms here, so no joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an intimate space, but it keeps going and going. Yeah, yeah, so uh, when you think about like the owner suite, what are some of the initial thoughts that you have when you come in here to kind of make this work for the homeowners? So our first thought is really about the scale of this room because we have really high ceilings and great architecture, but the footprint is not so grand. And yeah. so we're really going to try and play with some of the scale here and make it feel more intimate, romantic. And then I think a big thing for us as a firm, we try to be really sensitive about time and place and so pay respect to uh, the area surrounding our home that we're designing. And so here we have beautiful views that we've been feeling like it looks like a safari. Sure, uh, yeah. Uh, didn't know what to expect. We've never worked in this part of Texas before, yeah. uh, but we've been really inspired by it uh, and wanna make sure that our textures and our materials uh, pay homage to that and feel harmonious. And I think for us, one of the exciting challenges about this space is that we're all seeing um, this modern farmhouse architecture all over social media, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. And there's been such a, you know, one way to do it. It's always black, white, neutral, 
wooden texture and it kind of just falls flat. And what we think is the target demographic here yeah. are empty nesters. <laughs> they're at a time of their life where they're not trying to prove anything to anyone yeah. and they're gonna do it their way. So if there's anyone that's gonna give us the ability to go a little bit bolder within the modern farmhouse context, it's gonna be them. You guys have a lot to do. I'm gonna let we you do. get to it. Best of luck in this project. Thank you, <laughs> we <laughs> need <Okay>. it. <laughs> So one of the first things that we want to do is make this vestibule that leads into the master bedroom that you can see off of the living room space feel really special. And so we want to do some paneling on the walls. Yeah, bring a little architecture detail to the space. Focus on the ceiling there too. For sure. Because That's always the forgotten plane and so we want to thinking about mirroring some of that paneling up there. Right, and we have an architectural element with a vent on the ceiling that we can't change the placement of, but we don't want that to impact the rest of our space. So. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we always do. And then moving into the bedroom. We're challenged with the volume in the space. So we're thinking about using a canopy bed to bring down the scale of the room, make it feel a little bit more intimate. And then the walls. Yeah, so we're going to bring in some color and we're going to think about some yellow because we're in a happy place. We want to make sure that we bring some of that excitement into the bedroom but in a really calm and serene way yeah and we're also going to pay attention to the ceiling here tyler told right. us that he wants beams on the ceiling really beautiful wood beams it's popular in texas yeah. so we're going to embrace that but we'll add our own little flair and go with a whitewashed planking on the ceiling because we have a little bit of space between the fireplace wall and the bed we'd love to do a long rectangular ottoman at the foot of the bed and give a little pattern to that so the bed will be in a really cool pattern and it'll be juxtaposed with something else that's equally cool at the foot of the bed so in the bathroom we know that we want to create something really dynamic and special and unique and so we are thinking of creating our own pattern by using readily available materials we typically do this by cutting materials that are in standard sizes into smaller sizes of those same tiles um, and it's a lot of sketching and drawing out and playing with color and sizes until we get the puzzle right because it really does feel like a puzzle what do you think about doing an outdoor shower but like outdoor shower that you only access from the master bathroom we've never done that why wouldn't we do it this right. is the perfect time and place we have to talk to Tyler about that <laughs> yeah sorry Tyler <laughs> and we're also going to pull on some of that blue color that we have in the vestibule on the way into the room into this bathroom so our tub is going to be in a powder blue that we can't wait to see yeah that's that's going to be super and then with the vanity we will have two bowls uh, everyone needs their own <laughs> wash station so we're going to use uh, caesar stone countertops not quite sure what finish we're going to use yet but we want to bring in a really natural raw looking uh, material and we're going to do some custom oak paneling to tie into the oak that we have on our ceilings and really bring the harmony between the two spaces. One of the things that we saw right away when we looked at the floor plan was that we have a straight shot from bedroom through bathroom yeah. right into the closet. And so we wanted to make sure that when we're standing in the bedroom or in the bathroom that we're not looking at the closet mess. And so that was really important to us to make sure that that looked really clean and organized, really exciting. Yeah. Today I'm going to talk with Joe from Fiberworks about which rugs we are going to look at and narrow down some choices. Hey Joe, how are you? Jessica, how are you? Good, thanks. So we're going for something that's going to be really sophisticated in this bedroom, looking for something that's more tone on tone. We're not looking for high contrast. So we have this one. I think that this is a little bit too much pattern. Um, we're gonna go for something that's a little bit more subtle. This is a really nice option as an underlayment for an area rug. It's just not the right one for this project. Option number two, we have this guy, which I love this one. This, it's got this kind of like braided weaving to it. It reminds me of a cozy sweater. It's 100% wool, that's Glacier. That's one of our new introductions this year. and. It is stunning. That is actually hand knotted. Is to find hand knotted broad loom is, is pretty incredible. 
It's funny because when you have those little imperfections, that's what makes it really feel special and unique. So even though it's coming off of a roll and we know it's not, you know, made custom for you, it has that feel, which is really nice. This is another one that I think is so pretty. You know, a staple for interior designers is to go with a natural material like sisal, jute, hemp. The one concern I have about this one is because it's a bedroom, the contrast between our really soft pile here and then going to something that's a little bit harder underfoot might be a little too jarring just for this application, but like in a living room, this would be such a great uh, underlayment under another rug or standalone by itself, really. And then our last option is this guy, Stratus. It's really subtle, but has a lot of variation in the color. So the contrasting warp, which is that smaller layering um, weave on the top there. What? And that wider contrast actually pulls out nicely with that merino wool that you have. And so you have that strie, you have that, you know, very clean, it's very practical in, yeah. in the, for this application and, and very nice, well done. I'm really excited about this one. For the finishing option, uh, I think we had early on spoke about some binding opportunities and things like that, but I think you've selected or would like to just stay with the surge edge. I actually brought some of those samples with me. So that's going to be the surge edge. And it is the actual wool that the that we use in the, in the fiber here is actually on the surging there. So I think that that one's the home run for sure. Perfect. And then I think we're going to talk about also using the same material as a wall-to-wall -wall option in our walk-in closet, which I think will be so nice to tie these two spaces together. And then that one won't have the layering, so it'll let it shine on its own, which is going to be great. That's a, a really cool opportunity too for us and you uh, to kind of move into that, that uh, closet space as well. And, you know, of course, everything that we have is on a roll of carpet and to be able to customize a rug for you. And then to be able to have that installed wall to wall, I think it's just going to be a home run for sure. Well, congratulations. This is going to be wonderful. And I can't wait to get to Fredericksburg, Texas to see the, the whole home project in its entirety. Thank you. We spoke with Joe from Fiberworks and we're really happy with our selection, which is Stratus Morning Light. So one of our favorite things that I think we do on almost every project yeah is cut the broad loom around the size of any kind of cutouts or any architectural ins and outs or turns. Yes. In a room like this where we have a fireplace that we have to wrap around in some walls that jog in and jog out, you can use broad loom to really create a custom high-end look where you can have the rug actually follow the shape of the room. And the only alternative to that and achieving that same look is to go with a custom area rug that can be super pricey and take at least six months to get. So I would say that's probably one of our favorite hacks that we yeah. always use. It's a go-to. And Fiberworks is a great resource for this uh, particular hack because they have so many different neutral but yet really textural options that work well on their own. But also if you want to layer a rug on top of that broad loom base like we did in this room. So Tyler, our builder, is not just a builder, but he has an architectural background. So the experience with him has been a little bit different in that Besides, he has opinions, he right? He has opinions, um, and builders typically do, but he's, I think, more uh, passionate about it. There has been a back and forth. Some things have been harder to overcome than others, but we push. My name is Tyler O'Brien and I own Agave Custom Homes. People have kind of put an adjective to my company name where, oh my God, it's an Agave home. We can just spot it out in the neighborhood one of your houses. Toledo Geller, uh, I think they're very talented and their portfolio is amazing. Their first design pitch for their space was my favorite. Everything about the room, all the elements they were using got me really excited about their plan. So a couple of days ago, we got some texts from Tyler's team and in the background, we could see some of the tile that yeah. was installed, and it wasn't what we selected. So that was a surprise. <sighs> Deep breath. <laughs> so when I saw the fireplace plan in the master bedroom, I was excited to have that element in there because I could bring in more brick in my mind or more stone because that's what we typically do our fireplaces out of. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Virginia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? 
Oh, you know, just another day here on the construction site. I believe in you. Well, I have an idea I was thinking about in the master bedroom fireplace. Okay, shoot. So, you know, we've got the white limestone outside and we've got a mix of some brick accents. And I was wondering if we did the limestone on the fireplace in the master bedroom, and maybe did some brick on that as well. You know, in Texas, we like to use a lot of stone and heavy materials, so I didn't know what your plan was or what you were thinking about on that fireplace, but I think it might really look nice in there and just wanted to get your thoughts. He wanted the raised hearth, the whole big Texan look, and that's really not what we wanted to do in this space. Um, again, we're thinking about this might be for an empty nester, a little bit finer, and not the norm. They're expecting something different in this room, um, not what you typically see in the modern farmhouse or necessarily in Texas. And so we have a completely different vision. My gut reaction is that if we use this chunky sort of cleft stone from floor to ceiling on the fireplace, it's gonna be overwhelming. The thought was to do something a little bit more simple and more so like a precast limestone feel to it uh, and have the wallpaper that we're using on all of the other walls just continue onto the uh, fireplace chimney wall. Well, let me go with your gut. I mean, your room so far looks amazing. So let's let's see what this looks like. Awesome. Thank you. Fingers crossed. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye. So for interior designers, we get asked lots of different questions. Some are really design oriented and others are super personal or weird or weird <laughs> because people be when they start working with a designer they almost become paralyzed in their decision making abilities and so we've become semi experts on mattresses So we all know that there are places to save, but there are also places to splurge. And when we design master bedrooms, we really encourage our clients to splurge on their mattress. I mean, a good night's rest is priceless. So for this project, we worked with Stearns and Foster on, and used their reserve mattress collection, which has a variety of um, great uh, features. One of my favorites, since I have a husband who runs hot, <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> is their cooling system. So they have some technology within the mattress that allows you to sleep really comfortably and cool even if you're a person that runs hot. <laughs> and I love the firm base, but there's a really nice plush top to this mattress. And so it has memory foam in it. It remembers your body and how you like to sleep. And so the minute you hit that mattress, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's a 40-year-old jump. <laughs> we love our custom bathrooms, and so one of the creative solutions that we used in this bathroom was to use readily available material and cut it down to size to create a highly customized look for a fraction of the price. We know that those custom mosaics are really on trend right now, but they can be super pricey, especially if you're using exotic materials. So what we did in this installation is we took a 12 by 12 piece of stone, which was Carrera. We kept that in its original format. That is available anywhere. We then took white Thassos, another material. We purchased it in a 12 by 12 size, but we had our tile installer cut it down to a six by 12 size. Okay. And then we also got a really awesome brown third emperor material. <laughs> third material. <laughs> and we also had that in a 12 by 12, but we cut that down into a six by six. We got four pieces out of one. Yeah, so that's something also to think about the sizes that you're going to cut the tiles. Uh, they should be some sort of uh, factor or denominator? Division. Division of <laughs> the tile size that you're using so that you can cut down on waste. So it's also talking about waste, it's also super important to uh, know that while we're saying this is certainly a cost savings from a uh, custom marble mosaic, you will incur a little bit more on your labor cost because your tile installer will have to do a lot more cutting to achieve the ultimate pattern.
When we first arrived on uh, site, we were pleasantly surprised with how everything turned out. I mean, I was holding my breath. I texted Jessica early in the morning and said I was so nervous to see it all, just not knowing what to expect. And yeah, I was relieved. It all started to come together. And in fact, the tile in the bathroom, we were very happy with it. Yeah. Um, it still brought that very dynamic, high contrast, high end look that we were after. And once our bed came into the space and we saw how it really tied in well with the high contrast black and white stripe, yeah. it all started coming together as it always does. And seeing that bed be assembled, was so exciting for us. We worked really hard on designing all of the different proportions and we knew that that scale was really important to nail and watching it be built in front of our eyes, it took our breath away a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I love this space. <laughs> I love it more. <laughs> We've never been able to do this color combination. Yeah. So this has been really cool. We've done a little bit of play of yellow and blue in the past, but not yellow, blue, a little bit of this brown color, right. tobacco and blush. It's just come together so beautifully. And I, I'm, I'm beyond, I'm really excited. I know, it's awesome to be able to like flex our design muscle without having anybody except for Tyler <laughs> tell us what we can and can't do. <laughs> Tyler hasn't seen this face. I know. I can't tell if he's gonna love it or hate it. I mean, I know yellow is not his color. It's not. I'm not a fan of yellow. Never have been. But this is, it's not overbearingly yellow here. I'm probably still not a fan of yellow, but I think if it's used in a room and it's done tastefully, it could grow on me. We've got so much other stuff going on. We'll see, we'll see. I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea what Toledo Geller was going to do in this space. Even when I started to see the samples of the wallpaper that was chosen, this kind of yellow veneer from Philip Jeffries, I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. But you know, it's one of those things where like, you have to sometimes trust the design team in place and it's not until all the pieces are pulled together that you fully get the vision. And so I did not get the vision early. I didn't never got the vision. <laughs> But when I saw the final product, I thought it was fantastic. Krisha, we are so excited to show you how this space turned out. You know, I had no idea what you guys were gonna do in this <laughs> And, you know, you said you weren't going to be basic black and white. I nope. think you are not basic black yeah. and white. You got to tell me how you landed on this yellow and the material that you used in here. Okay, so we're not neutral girls. <laughs> if you look at our portfolio, you could see that very quickly. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to do something that brought in a lot of neutrals. So we do work with a lot of browns and whites and greens and black in here, but we wanted to make it exciting, have some yellow, bring in a little bit of sunshine. Yeah. We love a zen vibe for a bedroom, but we're bored of seeing the same thing all the time. As sure. designers, yes. we need to keep it interesting for us as well as for our clients. Yeah. <laughs> and so we wanted to see if we could make a zen bedroom that wasn't blue or wasn't white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you hit that on the mark. <laughs> It is definitely not boring, but it still does feel cozy. And I feel like a big part of that is all the texture that you did, you promised you were gonna bring That's it right. in, but I see it everywhere. So That's kind right. of walk me through. Yeah, I mean, if the walls were painted this color yellow, this room would have felt really different. Yeah, right. And so we looked to Philip Jeffries for the wall covering. Um, it's called their Oxhorn line in mm -hmm. Celadon. Um, and it brings in this variety of texture. Some of it looks like linen, some yeah. of it looks like it's wood. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so because of that, you have all this different tone Personality in the material and softens the entire look. Yeah, and then yeah. that just, just became our foreground for a springboard of all of the other colors that we brought into this space. And all of the other textures, I mean, from the floor to your lampshades to the bed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have pattern in this room, yeah. but if you look at each individual element, it's not that it's an overwhelming amount of pattern. And so we achieve all of that depth through all of the different textures, from the Fiberworks linen looking rug that's right. grounding this whole entire space to the rug company's rug on top of it, to the subtle stripe on the bed. Well, maybe it's not so subtle, <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's, it's not like, it's yeah. not, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's not that 
very high contrast black and white. It, the black has like a little bit of a painterly feel to it, so it yeah. tones it all down. And you also kind of have a stripe motif going on in this comfy chair behind you. We do. We do. And that one was pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. So we always say there's a place to save and there's a place to splurge. And, and so in this case, I was tasked by my partner over here uh, to find a, an affordable piece of furniture. Okay. Um, and I found this at a consignment shop for a whopping 30 bucks. And it was in great condition. So all we had to do was send it to our upholsterer yeah. and have it recovered in this awesome S. Harris fabric. I love that. And also, one of the things you said you were gonna hit, scale, right? Yes. It's not a big room, right. but it's a tall room. It is. And you mentioned wanting to make sure it still felt cozy. That's right. So how did you hit that? Mm. So it's a designer trick, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. like to say. <laughs> um, oftentimes we use a four poster bed or a canopy bed in order to do that. And so we looked to one of our custom upholsters to create this really clean line bed that we drew up and had them fabricate. And in order to bring that dynamic feel to it that we thought would be really appealing to the empty nesters that we're sure. catering towards here, we did it in this high contrast black and white. But like as Jessica mentioned, the black and white stripe is done in this very painterly soft feel so mm -hmm. that it's not too overwhelming in the right. space. Right. No, I think that the way this kind of occupies the space, this makes it the star, right? And the bed it usually is, is the star it anyway. Is, right. Yeah. Uh, this isn't the only star in this space. I gave you a lot of spaces. <laughs> and one that I'm kind of spying right now is the bathroom, and I definitely want to see what you did with that. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Did I know you had all this? <laughs> um, yeah, you did. <laughs> Okay, so first thing I know that I have to talk about is the fact that you did bring that one element that you talked about so much texture into this bathroom in a really surprising way. Yeah, we enveloped all of the walls that we didn't cover with tile in this really awesome textural wallpaper that almost feels like linen. Yes, again, yes, again, to yeah. To the master bedroom, but done in this really pretty watercolor-esque uh, yeah. version of blue. And then we also wanted to bring in something interesting on the vanity, and so we incorporated a different linen wallpaper on the drawer fronts. And we also had Caesar Stone build us an enveloping shell around the whole thing. Yeah. We wanted it to be a real focal point to this room, super durable, really um, user-friendly, yeah. and something to look at. Right, yeah. right. We need to balance out everything interesting in the bedroom, Have equally interesting, although in a different way, in the bathroom. Otherwise, they feel super disjointed. A hundred percent, yeah. And it almost looks like it's natural concrete. Right. And that's what we were going for. Right, but right. we all know natural concrete comes with its, <laughs> yeah, <thing>. its issues, <laughs> yeah. its yeah. issues. So yeah, Caesar Stone was a great solution to achieve the look, but with a low maintenance factor. The other thing I think is so smart in here, which I never would have thought of, is you put these little petite sink bowls in here, right? Yeah, that are hammered, they're so beautiful, but it also gives you more counter Lots space. Of space. Right, yeah. like how big of a sink do you need? <laughs> that's right. right, that's, that's right. right. And then you don't have to fight with somebody about yeah. what, where, whose elbows are where and. I love that you're like somebody, yeah. like I don't know who you are, you stranger, <laughs> but like somebody is in my bathroom I'm fighting with. <laughs> can, can we edit that part out? <laughs> And speaking of signature hardware, I know this tub. <laughs> this tub yeah. is like everything. And yeah. I love that it's in a color. Yes. You know, I see so many white freestanding tubs, but this is great. Over and over again. Right. Especially in the modern farmhouses. Exactly, right, yeah. right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's so nice to see color infiltrated in a way that feels accessible. That's right. Right? That's right. Yeah, I mean, it's still, it's color, it's the same as in the bedroom. Like, right. It's, su it's subtle enough that it's not a bold color that you're gonna grow tired of. It's a very pale blue. Yeah. And so it's serene, it's soft, it's so beautiful. Yeah. We love this tub. We saw it and we we're like, oh, yeah. so we'll build a bathroom around that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You built a bathroom around this, but then you kind of took us outside. <laughs> That's right. An yeah, outdoor so shower. You took us outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool to be able, you have the weather on your side here. Yes. You right. can shower outside year round, yeah. really, and you have so much privacy. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about being exposed and how like relaxing and calming to hear 
all of nature surrounding yeah, 100%. you. hundred percent. And it's also like the owner suite. So this is their outdoor is shower. Private. Nobody's and, coming and through the, here. And the height of luxury. It's right. To, you know, decide in the morning whether you want to shower indoors or outdoors. I mean, how many people can say they can do that? Right, unless yeah. they're on vacation somewhere. Fabulous, That's right. right? Exactly. That's right. <laughs> so your last room, right? The closet. The closet. <laughs> yes. That's right. So I'm not going to make you guys meander all the way around the corner. <laughs> that long journey. But the things you hit on there, what was really important? The way this uh, home was laid out was such that when we walk into the bathroom directly ahead of us was the entry point into this amazing walk-in closet. So with that, we designed the closet interiors that that cabinetry would be closed. So it has doors on it and you can get as messy as you'd like. Yeah, and then yeah. The other space allows you to have a little bit more flexibility and sure. store your shoes or your sweaters that may <laughs> or may not be folded perfectly. Right, yeah. right. If only we all worked in retail, we would have gotten it right the first time. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Well, I have to say, I can't figure out if I want to go hop into the bed or go outside and take a shower. I guess not with you guys here. <laughs> But this is amazing. Thank so you. what do you guys want to do? I should actually give everybody a prize. <laughs> Toledo Geller wins best twinning because they showed up from two different areas of the country in the same outfit and color.